We'll be picking up in John chapter 1. Picking up in verse 14. Uh, starting out, I'll kind of remind us briefly again real quick. Um, in case you weren't here last week about um, John uh, being wanted, wanting to be discounted by um, modern day scholars because of the authority and, and, and what John portrays Jesus Christ as. John reading a little bit different because he had uh, the ability to read all of Paul's writings uh, and see the revelations that was given through Paul. Um, so uh, we'll get a little more context of that. Uh, through 19, we'll at least get through 19, I believe. Uh, but we'll, we'll kind of see a, a picture of things that we... We already know that we uh, uh, have com have been constantly going over, uh, whether it be Wednesdays or, or Sundays or church history, of uh, why men need to tear down who Jesus Christ was, take him down to a lower standard, uh, and tear uh, apart his ministry, but just hold enough of a fragment of it so that they can lift themselves up uh, as we'll be getting into the priest sent by the Pharisees uh, this week, uh, and, and then seeking to find out who John was and asking him some questions. <coughs> um, but uh, we, we need to understand that, I, that uh, this morning, I believe uh, everybody in here does understand that this book is 100% God's truth. It's his word. And we need to take it seriously, and we need to, to understand that um, we need to study it and, and prayerfully study it so that we can understand uh, everything that it contains. Uh, and then you can spend a lifetime uh, trying to get uh, deeper and deeper, and you'll never go to the, the depths this book has and all the connections that it makes and everything that it deals with. Uh, um, but there's a lot of simplicity in it that people try to complicate or, or delete and change the context of uh, so that they can lift themselves up uh, so that they can be the authority figure and have the fame. But in uh, verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, a couple things we'll look at in this verse. Uh, we'll, we'll see first um, here, and we beheld his glory. Now, I know the popular theme uh, of today's world, uh, and it's growing more and more rampant with, with the internet and with all the false teachings and the, the feel-good preaching and live your best life now garbage that's out there. Now we're seeing... More and more of this uh, uh, shows uh, going even beyond healings into casting out uh, devils, demons, um, and, and they just they they put on this show and, and people are just so drawn into it because they want a miracle to happen. They won't look to the book that can provide um, something to them uh, that, that that will bring them to an understanding of salvation and and why God. Uh, operates the way he operates, uh, and that it's the, the condition of man that that why people are born with a deformity or, or some type of retardation, uh, why some people die young, why some people will live a, a very unhealthy life, smoke three packs of cigarettes a day, and live to be a hundred. Um, th there's no rhyme or reason. It, in that outside of God is God, and he's going to choose uh, who he gives a long life to and, 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 and uh, or allows to have a long life. And, and when somebody dies young, is born with an illness and, and things like that, it comes down to just genetics. We're, 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 contrary to evolution, human, human DNA has done nothing but get worse since Adam. 
and Eve uh, ate of the tree in the garden. It's not done nothing but deteriorate. Things tend to break down. They don't get better. Nothing has ever been observed to get better. And the reason I get on that uh, subject and kind of a little, little side thought here getting into this is because of uh, Facebook's AI deal that I just happened to notice. I don't know how long it's been there, but I took a little circle and I started asking it some questions uh, about Jesus. And uh, uh, some of the things that it came to was, uh, well, Jesus is nothing but love, basically. He accepts all, and, and, and his ministry is full uh, of love. And I, uh, I asked, you know, well, what about wrath? Well, it's important to understand while I accept your uh, personal beliefs, you need to be accepting of all religions and all people as Jesus accepted them. Uh, so we, we see we see how this AI is going to start portraying some of this stuff uh, to the world that already wants to believe that, that already desires to believe that type of thing. Uh, and then, um, well, I asked it a lot more questions. And let, let, you get curious, you can go in your messenger, there's a little wheel there. You have all kinds of conversation with uh, uh, an AI and and the algorithms that, that's been put in place to, to tell you uh, uh, any answer, give you any uplifting message uh, you want. Uh, and w when, I, when I started talking to it about evolution, it, well, it, all of a sudden, it was scienti uh, scientifically proven uh, fact that evolution is real. Uh, and I, I, I said, well, no, it, it's a religious belief. And she, well, why I respect your... Um, point of view, you're wrong, and it is scientific fact. Um, so it'll respectfully agree with you and correct you and encourage you to trust it, to to take it uh, as your your authority, um, and tell you that you need to just pay attention to what it's saying. That this is the world that we're we're moving into. Uh, AI is becoming a scarier. And scarier thing, the more the more it develops, the more the more they develop it and to control and sway minds. Internet's been doing that for years. Uh, advertisements before the internet's been doing that for uh, decades. Um, but it's moving to something that's more advanced than that. Uh, but I, I I want us to look that uh, co contrary to what the world will tell us today, uh, that Jesus Christ is nothing but love. And he accepts all, uh, and that uh, this Bible was written by men, and and you got to take it for what it is, and and what what sounds good to you, you know, um, as long as you're not going to force it on anybody else, uh, let it be your truth. Uh, but but there are errors in it, and it's kind of it's kind of funny how some of those errors that they they say, uh, you know, as far as King James. The, the claim to, to tear down the King James Bible in the early years that people tend to still hold on to was, well, King James was a known homosexual. Uh, uh, that was disproven uh, uh, as propaganda. Uh, but, of course, it never came out of history books. Um, and they, they uh, for instance, we covered the first week of this, uh, some of the areas that remove the, the Trinity uh, and the uh, the authority of God, we've covered several times where where it deals with where Satan uh, and and Jesus Christ are in this. Uh, for example, one that I've talked about many times, so I won't go in deep with it. But in Isaiah fourteen twelve, where your King James put Satan, your other versions put Jesus. Um, just things like that, uh, because it's all, it's been Satan's goal through his church to do nothing but tear down this book, tear down. Uh, Jesus Christ to, to a lower level so that everybody can feel good that they have this loving Savior that loves them enough that they can go out and live exactly how they want to live, live their best life now, do what they want. There's no consequences for sin. Um, yet, uh, yet we have this justice system that will punish people for sinning uh, because in man's eyes, uh, if you do something bad enough, you, you go to prison, you get fined uh, for something as little as speeding. 
but they'll completely tear apart where they got all these these morals and these laws and in that system from uh, that you can find um, in the King James Bible, and you can find enough of that stuff in, in, in other versions, but the important stuff is exactly what Satan has, has strived to, to alter and to remove. Uh, so we're going to look right here at this uh, be, uh, beheld, uh, and the definition for beheld is to fix the eyes <laughs> upon, to see with attention, to observe with care, to attend. So, something we know about this, uh, when it say, says they beheld the, his glory, um, it is that they, they were there in attendance. They, they witnessed everything Jesus did. Uh, they, they knew uh, who the Savior was because they believed and they witnessed the miracles. Uh, every, everything uh, that they speak about throughout the Gospels, that everything that... Uh, uh, Paul was a witness to Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Um, uh, they, they took account of this. Now, some of the ways we understand and we can believe because, because of the claim that they beheld it is, is what we have to understand is we don't have to live by blind faith. Uh, I, you know, I, we don't have a God that sit, sits here and, and would leave us to say, okay, here's my word, here's what I did. Now, you just need to believe it with no evidence. Uh, God's going to leave some pretty solid, strong evidence, but ignorant men and women in this world uh, want to view themselves as wise, so there's no way they could uh, believe a book uh, written in the way it's written and believe in a Savior who came and did the miracles that he did. Uh, they don't even want to believe in a creator that created everything. They'd rather believe... Rocks that came from nothing uh, collided and, and created everything, uh, rather than than a, a creator. Now, um, here's some of the the things that we know uh, about the Gospels: is they they had they beheld they had eyewitnesses of the accounts of Jesus' life, uh, of his glory, grace, and his truth. Um, and here's what we're going to look at, how we know we can, can trust the eyewitnesses that, that went through this uh, and, and had these experiences. Um, uh, for, for instance, uh, we need, we, first and foremost, get, get, get on track here, is we have faith. We have faith in this book. We have faith that God preserved his word. Uh, if we were born again Christian and you're studying this book, uh, the, the deeper you get into an understanding of this book, you're going to understand God preserved his word. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, looked into several of the supposed contradictions this Bible contains, uh, the King James Bible contains, that this world tries to say is archaic and, archaic and outdated. Uh, and there's always a reason or an explanation uh to why it's worded that way or why it says uh, something here and something else there. Uh, something we've covered in the past in Genesis, for instance, uh, is creation. God created everything from the water, and then you go to the next chapter, and he's created everything from the ground. Uh, well, that's a contradiction. That's a, a popular contradiction that, that, that a lot of people like to go to when it's simple that God created everything from water, and then he set Adam down and created everything from the ground. Uh, to show Adam he created everything. Uh, it's really, really uh, a, a lot of cases uh, as simple as that, but people want to find contradictions so that the word isn't perfect, so that it is written by man, so that they can have control and power and authority and fame and, and uh, feel comfortable in sin uh, rather than having an authoritative word of God that is full of truth. Uh, some of the other things we know uh, that that uh, we can trust in is the uh, the 500 uh, people that witnessed uh, Jesus Christ raised from the dead and and, and that he didn't stay buried. Um, okay, so you can say that's a made up story, but but here here's what comes uh, really compelling to me is, is the harmony of the Bible, the harmony of the Gospels, uh, but 
how they all will tell some of the same stories, but but ha they're not identical to each other, but they're all they're they're both true. It's kind of kind of like uh, uh, two people in here they witness something, and somebody's going to pay have have a little bit more different uh, details that they add in what they write down uh, than somebody else. They may be telling the same event, but somebody just put a little, maybe put a little more details. doesn't mean the stories are separate or not true. It just means somebody wrote it their way, inspired by the Holy Spirit uh, in this book, um, uh, and they told a little bit different account of it. Why, why does God do that? Maybe so you'll study it, and you'll so if you want to get the whole picture of everything that was going on, uh, so you'll study it and you'll see uh, how the, the, the Gospels uh, are, are harmonious together uh, so that, that you won't just sit here and read one book. If God was going to contain everything in one book and give you all the details in one book, uh, <coughs> you, you could get that pretty down uh, pat memorized pretty easily uh, rather than searching and, and, and staying engaged in his word. Uh, but but here, here's, here's where the some of the most compelling evidence comes uh, to how you can trust uh, the accounts of the life of Jesus, the accounts of his resurrection, uh, his authority on this earth, um, it is that uh, these witnesses, uh, the, the writers of uh, the Gospels, Paul, uh, the disciples, they died. They, they didn't just die, they, 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 were, they suffered persecution, beatings, torture, uh, and, and common sense will tell us that um, if Charlie, for instance, was, it told everybody in here, I, I have this, this new message, this new message I'm going to uh, tell you, and I'm telling you it's true, and we let him ride on that for a year, and, and then we finally were, were like, okay, he, this, we're tired of it. Uh, we're, we're all going to get bats and we're going to beat you <laughs> and, and then we're going to hang you uh, and, and we're going to kill you. Um, you think he would still hold on to that lie? You think he would admit that, no, I've been lying this whole time. You, you know, sp spare me. We're going to let him go uh, because he came clean. He, he quit talking about his lies and his garbage that he, he was spe spewing. Um they did. They 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 knew what they witnessed. They knew what they had faith in. Uh, they knew who Jesus Christ was, and and they chose rather than reject the Savior of this world. They chose to be beaten and, and broken and and die in His name rather than reject Him because they were they were more concerned with their eternity than they were with their life here on earth. And that's that's where people get so so drawn drawn into is this life on earth. And, and I, I just you know if I if I had never gotten married and I never had kids, um, it, and I was in the same mindset, the same set where I, set where I was saved and and studied in the Word of God, I'd sit here at 37 years old thinking the only purpose I have is to continue to study. Uh, and, and teach and tell people about Jesus. Other than that, I, I really have no desire to be here. Uh, and and there's where we can find a, a clear uh, clear understanding and, and a clear peace when it comes to death. And, 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 um, uh, and we don't have to deal with this uh, uh, in the United States, but other people in the world that... that uh, put their faith in Jesus Christ that actually are persecuted, that, that's why they can find hope because they're, they're not concerned with what men can do to, to them on this earth, much like the people uh, uh, this book talks about, much like Shane mentions, uh, uh, has mentioned several times. Um, and and I, I would encourage you just like uh, he would if you've not got a copy or, or haven't read uh, the Fox's Book of Martyrs, you can have countless uh, testimony of people that uh, would rather die because they, they they believed in a savior they trusted the the evidence this book provides the, the evidence that history provides uh, to put their faith in a savior and, and be beaten in prison tortured and killed uh, because they were focused in, in, on, on a savior that could provide for them for eternity 
but rather than men that could kill you and then do nothing. Like the book says, uh, people need to come back to an understanding uh, that, that it, it's, it, we need to not be concerned what, what men can do to you, no, how, no matter how horrible uh, it may feel and no matter how uh, terrible the experiences may be, uh, you need not concern yourselves with what men can say or do to you on this earth and then do nothing, but you need to have a fear in, in a, a Savior that will uh, judge you one day uh, and if you reject him, it'll be at the great white throne judgment, and you're going to hear bind them hand and foot and cast them out. Uh, it, we need to be concerned about eternal decisions, not 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 earthly decisions that you may live ten, uh, ten and twenty and a hundred years. Uh, if you live as old as Methuselah did. Um, it's still nothing compared to eternity. Um, but, uh, moving on to this next part, uh, it, th this is where um, uh, we, we see uh, these great scholars uh, really start needing to tear apart as, as we get to this uh, only begotten um, uh, of the Father being Jesus Christ, and they need to tear that down, uh, as we covered a little bit last week, um, b because if Jesus Christ is who he says he is, and he's the only begotten, well then all of a sudden, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you claim uh, to be, uh, every pope uh, that's ever uh, been in power, every leader of every uh, mega church that wants to preach um, uh, prosperity, uh, every Furtick, every Osteen, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Mormons, all, all this uh, uh, he uh, healing preaching and, and, and demon casting out, uh, uh, garbage that we see uh, uh, really taking a, a rise in, in popularity, um, all, all of it is none effect because you have uh, one authority uh found in this book, uh, and we have one authority left on this earth, and, and men and, and, and women, uh, that's another thing that's really getting uh, raised up, is, is uh, uh, all, of the, all the women preachers that are coming up and changing the context, and men backing them up and changing the context of what this book says uh, about women uh, teaching, and, and they, they limit it to just a, a section of this book. Um, and say it had to deal with culture, not what God wanted. And they, they terribly take things out of context. And they've been doing that. I saw in what the first take. They've been doing that uh, since the uh, uh, 80s, I believe. It could have been um, a little older than that. I don't know, have any idea. I recognize the, the lady that was uh, saying this stuff in this little sitcom. Uh, couldn't tell you what sitcom it was or who she was. But... but uh, uh, they made a, a preacher that stood on the, the King James Bible uh, look like a complete fool uh, and, and a bumbling idiot uh, while this woman sat here and tore it apart uh, and, and how, how he didn't understand it and how she was right. And so this is something Satan has, has started, started in those early days to get to where he's at today to where this world will accept everything contrary to what the Word of God says, uh, because it, it, in the name of, of justice, in the name of being fair, in the name of, of what man sees right over, over the things of what God sees right, it's, it's all about uh, uh, having power and authority and fame and popularity uh, when they don't understand that it, they may get a little bit of fame and popularity in, in, for, for a season, but... but in, in reality is that they're getting nothing. They're, they're getting exactly what Satan wants. They're, they're, they're being pulled away. They're, they're drawing the world further away. They're drawing people further away from the truth uh, of, of the Bible uh, so that, that he can uh, see many people cast into hell with him one day. Uh, <coughs> that's what we, we pretty much get to, and that's why we have, have uh, seen so many different uh, denominations. That's why we've seen so many 
uh, different variants of Baptists even um, in, in today's world it, it is because back Back in the early 1800s, Baptists were responsible for the separation of church and state, um, and and uh, uh, not to keep uh, the church out of the state, but to keep the state out of the church, uh, so they get get some protection from uh, uh, the Catholics. Uh, but when, when we get when we get to where we're at today. Uh, they, they've long came away from the King James Bible. They've came uh, largely away from what they stood on uh, all them years ago. And so that's where you start seeing splits uh, to where you get from Baptists and then your missionary Baptists. And now your independent fundamental Baptists and, and, and Southern Baptists and all, all this stuff. Uh, but I will tell you, it took, it took uh, something like independent fundamental Baptists to step apart and say, no, this is the word of God and y'all are screwed up. Um, it, it, it gets as it the world overly overly complicates this book and, and, and tears it apart and perverts it rather than just sticking with the simplicity uh, of salvation and the simplicity of the word of God that can be revealed to you if you seek Him and seek understanding. <laughs> People don't want to seek anymore; they just want to be told. Verse fifteen. We may not get to it, but I didn't think spending that much time on that. But verse 15 says, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Uh, that's something that, it, it, you know, every, uh, every pope, uh, Pope Francis now, uh, Olstein first thing again, it would do them some good. To, to really ponder on this right here so that they could understand that a man like John the Baptist that's, that's uh, preaching and ushering in the way of the Savior uh, still keeps himself humble rather than uh, stepping, uh, stepping forward and saying, hey, yeah, I'm somebody, look at me. Uh, he says, no, no, I, the, the one coming is before me. He's coming after me, but he's before me. Now, um, he wasn't seeking fame and, and, and popularity and, and, and uh, uh, authority of any kind. He was seeking to do the will of God and, and, and tell the world that the Savior was on the way. Uh, but people back then, they didn't want to listen to him largely. Uh, the Pharisees definitely didn't want to, want to listen to him because if he was telling the truth, for one... Um, their, their authority was over. Uh, and, and again, we'll, we'll get to that subject in, in a little bit. Uh, but he, he, here's where people get ignorant. And, and, and I know this is just a simple thought. And for anybody that, that is just drinking a little bit of milk of this uh, uh, book today, we'll, we'll understand this. Uh, but but I, I'm telling you, there's people out there that are ignorant enough that they would come to the point where they would say, well, um, it, it, if he came after you, uh, how is he before you? Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, if, if he came after you, how is he before you? Well, it's simple. John came preaching Jesus Christ the Savior. Jesus Christ came after. Uh, but... Jesus Christ was before John because he was before Moses. He was before Abraham. He was bef uh, before Adam. Uh, it, we get that right off the uh, off the uh, uh, first verse in uh, chapter one of John here uh, that he was from the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Uh, Jesus Christ came down. He became flesh. He put on flesh uh, to come. Uh, after John to fulfill prophecy. Uh, it's it, pretty simple thought, but it, it's it's simple things like that that people will try to um, tear things apart. That's why they got to, again why they got to lower Jesus in, down and, and to to be lesser than he is because they can tear apart things like this that, that constantly go back to, to putting him uh, at the beginning to, to putting him at the beginning of creation, the creator of all things. Uh, 16 says, 
and of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time, uh, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So, <coughs> Satan wants to convince this world through his ministers that, that Jesus Christ is not just only, um, is not the begotten Son, but also that y you see this grace for grace. He wants to convince this world that, that the grace of Jesus Christ is has grace, and then his grace has grace, and, 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 and so on. Uh, he, he's, he's done a very compelling and convincing job uh, to much of this world, uh, to um, much of this country, to believe that Jesus Christ loves you so much, uh, again, that you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, th there's no such thing as hell. It doesn't exist. You might as well live exactly how you want to live. Enjoy what you got here. Uh, because after that, you're going to uh, have a Savior that loves you so much that you're going to be with Him anyway. Um, the reality of what this is talking about is grace for grace. John is, is talking about everybody uh, that, that uh, would believe on the name of Jesus Christ before his death, and those that believe on Jesus Christ after his resurrection. Uh, there, there's a bit of a difference there. So you have this short window of three and a half years uh, where, where people are believing on Jesus Christ. Some are obviously going to die. Uh, they're going to die not being true to the law because they trust the Savior's came, right? Um, John... He, he believed the Savior came. He preached in, ushered in the way of the Savior. He had his head cut off. Uh, and uh, uh, he went down to Abraham's bosom to the day that Jesus uh, uh, came. He took captivity captive. John found grace in that. Um, John was given grace in that, rather. Uh, and and uh, when we get a little bit further into this, uh, we see that... Uh, the grace of God has always been in this book from Genesis to Revelation. It's always been uh, throughout all of time. Uh, so we, we want to understand that uh, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So you see people uh, that constantly try to tell you the Old Testament isn't important. You need to focus on the New Testament, but not pay attention to John and some of this other stuff that it says. Because um, they want to build their narrative. Uh but what they don't break down here is to, to look at a couple of examples uh, of grace in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, in, in some of the cases uh, where God tried to give grace, um, Sodom and Gomorrah would be a perfect example where God tried to give his grace uh, for Abraham's sake. Uh, and they, they didn't turn from their wicked ways. God couldn't find any, anybody righteous in, in the uh, the cities, and he destroyed it. But, lockdown grace. It, it, uh, uh, we, we go on, and, and we can look at the uh, Moses finding grace. You can, we, I know we've been studying a, a lot uh, on the destruction of, of Israel and Judah, uh, but there's many instances Israel found uh, grace uh, with God, that God gave them grace in the Old Testament. Uh, so, some of the other uh, people that we know, and other places we know, uh, God gave grace to would be Nineveh, uh, with Noah, with David. Um, the grace of God has always been. There. Uh, what they don't what they don't see here in this verse is grace and truth. It doesn't say and grace started. It says grace and truth. Uh, the, the part they need to focus on is truth. They need to focus on truth because the Old Testament was faith by works. The New Testament is faith without works. Um, and uh, when, when you look at that and, and, and you can get on John, uh, in James and say faith without works is dead yeah well you're talking about uh, a different dispensation of time where it is going to be faith and works again but dealing with this present time um, not to chase that subject uh, but dealing with this is, is the, the, the whole truth for the, 
was not revealed to this world yet till Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ came, he brought the truth of what he was here to do, and that was provide the sin, uh, the cure for sin, uh, and give a way to, through him, to the Father. That hadn't been possible till he came and shed his blood. But... That people don't want to focus on that part uh, <laughs> uh, uh, of Scripture, and they, again, they want to continue to tear it down. And I lied to you. We, 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 next next week we'll we'll pick up in nineteen, but but I, I'm excited for that section because we're really going to start seeing uh, how ignorant the Pharisees are that, that sent these priests to find out who John was. Uh, and some of the answers uh, and some of the uh, fulfillment of prophecies and, and we'll get into how how right then in that moment had they been faithful I wouldn't have to be up here uh, st uh, stuttering and, and talking to you and so you wouldn't, you wouldn't be listening to me right now because all, all everything that we're that, that's coming to uh, uh, come drawn near uh, with, with the Lord's return um, all, all that would have done happened Anybody have any thoughts? Let's stretch our legs for a few minutes. <coughs>